And number three, there is no rose. I promised I'd talk a little bit more about, about tone, and, and this is one where we have this little throughout the whole piece, pretty much. It's very easy to play, of course. I mean, it's extremely simple. But you can still put some thought into that. And, and the thing is, these, these octaves, even though they're quiet, they still have to have that, that tone, that, that quality. One of the things that you can do, think about, and if, if you haven't before, it's kind of weird, but it does work, and that is thinking about, imagine you were going to play a really loud octave. And having that same force, that same pressure to the strings, but then not using all of it. Granjini used to talk about give tone and, and just that. Somehow building that intensity into the chord, even though it's quiet, as opposed to just sort of loosely playing the note. So that's something to think about on these guys. Just paying attention to them, really, and, and, and making sure that they are really there, even though they're quiet and they're very easy to play. Uh, I don't end up doing any sort of a complete muffle. This F tends to get muffled when I place that C. is a little risky because you can often hear it getting stopped and I, I, I don't mind hearing it ring through a little bit so just experiment with that you don't want them they're marked sonoro you don't want them to sound staccato so uh, and again to my ear I don't mind having some of the previous octave bleed through as you play the second one but of course if that really bothers you then then just work on ways of, of muffling these notes that that's not obtrusive that doesn't stand out um, then the right hand eventually comes in with this little... And again, here's where you can think about trying to give a good tone to those as well, even though, again, they're quiet, they're on these little strings. Um, piece gradually gets a little bit louder. The next section I want to talk about is on the second page where it's gotten quite loud, very loud, and we get the tune. We, the, the choir is singing, but our, suddenly the harp is, is playing this tune. And what can happen, because these are loud chords, they're high, it's kind of awkward, there's some pedal changing going on. What can happen is you lose a sense of the line, and this is really important. That it's like we're saying something. It's not just a word, a word, a word, a word. We're, we're saying something. There's a sentence. There's this line, and it needs to make sense. It needs to flow as a line. So each, from this very start of this chord, all the way to the last one, that first one's leading us to the last one. That it sort of implies the last one, that this line's going to happen. And we want to make sure that we feel that, that it's not just a, a chord, or oh, another chord, another chord. Um, so let me see what I can, what I can do. We get these these big chords. Something like that. Thinking towards the end almost of it's slowing down, but it's not. The, but you're, you're feeling that space between the notes that 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 you're it's a, a, almost a little bit of a surprise that the next chord is coming right in time or just oh here it is and and yeah and just playing with that overall line and making sure that it, it's musical and beautiful even though it's it's screechingly loud um, so we come down the choir comes back in then the next 
point I want to talk about are just some chords that, in my part, I have a possible fingering change where I have these big chords. Um, <laughs> That's easy for me, it's fine, but I have quite large hands. If your hands are smaller, you could certainly take out this, that middle, or not the little number, but the note that your second finger is playing and just do. Uh, <laughs> where you know if you have small hands that's some a place to make it easier for you it, you know don't kill yourself if it's if it's too much of a reach don't worry about it just just leave that one out and the final little section is just right at the very end it's a little confusing because it sounds like we're winding down we want to have we want to be slowing there's a natural inclination to feel as if the tempo is slowing down there. And then what happens is we come in on one and then the choir comes in on two. And what can happen is you'll want to come in with the choir, or the choir will want to come in with you. Because it's slowing down, it's not as if we're counting one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Um, we've lost a little bit of the rhythm of the of the driving force of the tempo so that this is a section where you may want to talk with the conductor and make sure that they're giving you a clear here's one whatever it is and then you know they're giving you and then the choir and that happens on the very final chord as well that you give that and then the choir comes in so just a little heads up there and again, this is where looking at the vocal score is very helpful because then you know what's supposed to happen there. Let's move on to number four. <laughs> 